Chelsea is unique. Chelsea is the smallest city in the state of Massachusetts. Many of the community members grew up in the city. But because it's a community of Latinos and poor people, no one expects anything good. But in this city, we did something big, and we did um, something big because enough with injustice. This all started Monday morning. We were opening the office, and then Chantel walks in, extremely alarmed that there was an incident over the weekend where a, a woman from the transgender community had, has been attacked. Vicious attack in Chelsea. A man left for dead after being hit, kicked, and punched. There are sources saying Macron Hernandez was wearing a wig and had nail polish on, which is why witnesses describe the victim as a woman. I look out my window and it's this dude beating on another person there, like brutal. This dude kicked on the floor and beat her with like a metal chain or a metal post. I hope she's all right or he, he she's all right and they catch the dude because that was left for dead right there. Left for dead, for real. Blood stains and blue latex gloves left behind from EMS on the ground outside 99 Parker Street in Chelsea. Where 26 year old Matthew... Entonces imagínate qué horror, qué horrible que la dejaron casi por muerta, casi la ha matado. Mi nombre es Chantel Sainz. Toda mi vida he vivido en Chelsea. Aquí pasé muchos momentos desagradables, sufrí mucha discriminación. Han atacado muchas y entonces yo por eso he acudido a la cooperativa de Chelsea a atacar la cara por ella, por mi comunidad. The incident actually hit home. The patrolmen that responded to the call didn't treat it if it was a regular female that was assaulted by a male. The police didn't do an arrest. And the sad part about this incident is that the woman gave up. She felt hopeless. That's what got me so upset. So, you know, we began to organize because this is what we do. We're in the business to end injustice in our city. I first heard about the assault through members of the transgender community. And Mass Quality was part of the coalition that was working on passing the Transgender Equal Rights Bill. It started in 2006. For us, this moment was enough is enough. This was the time to push the bill through, and Gladys was key for us in starting the momentum. Yes. I also knew that she did have a good relationship with um, Chairman O'Flaherty. Representative Eugene O'Flaherty from Chelsea is the head of judiciary for the state of Massachusetts, holds an enormous power, and for many years, he was against the bill. It takes a lot for either a person or an entity or an organization to convince me that it's important for a bill to leave this committee. The Transgender Equal Rights Bill means that transgender people are protected from discrimination in education, employment, housing, credit, and also hate crimes. The bill is about fairness and justice and treating people the way that they should be treated. So I think that what he didn't like about the bill is that it's, a, it's against his religion. I really think it, that's what it came down. I was like, chances are that I'm not going to win this campaign, but I'm sure going to take the fight. I immediately began to ask Chantel to give me more information. And, that I, and I also said, you know, Chantel, it is very important to have members of your community, of the transgender community, to meet with our representative Yo realmente uso mucho mi página social. Eh, hablé con muchas de las muchachas, amigas mías, y nos reunimos así, hicimos una, una fuerza. The strategy with Eugene O'Flaherty was to bring him to the city of Chelsea, to his city, in order for him to hear the stories. That way, he couldn't ignore them anymore. When I sat down at the meeting, I could tell that it was an emotional subject matter. Cuando uno caminando para el trabajo, diciendo así, no, tiene un señor que se veía ya bien, o sea, educado, cuando me puso a decirme ahí, hija de la tal, pues, o sea, haciendo con palabras fuertes, te voy a agarrar y te voy a hacer mujer. Something that struck me at the meeting when I heard some of the testimony was just how vulnerable some of these individuals are when they're out doing what most of us consider to be the normal functions of life. Just the fear of who they are, how they look, and how they present themselves, and how society 
potentially would react to that. Eh, cuando tenía 17 años, yo también fui víctima de violencia. Me atacaron en mi propia casa, un tipo aventó una botella, me rajó toda la frente. Eh, llamé a uno de los policías de Chelsea, el policía no hizo absolutamente nada. Gladys habló muy bien, porque Gladys también tuvo un hermano que era gay, que ha sido discriminado. He died of HIV and AIDS. He was never able to be accepted, to come out. He was never given a chance. I don't want the transgender community to go to what my brother did. This issue was a contentious issue. Folks were very uncomfortable. In order to get members to fully understand it, I'd explain what this bill would mean on the floor of the House in a caucus. It was really amazing. Chairman O'Flaherty really became our ally and our advocate to push the bill forward. We thought the bill might move quickly, but the groups opposing us were really strong. Please proceed. My name is David Stormberg. I'm a physician practicing psychiatry in Needham, Massachusetts. Uh, and I'm here to testify in opposition to House Bill 502, the Transgender Rights Bill. The Massachusetts Family Institute was one of the groups that was campaigning against it, and they labeled it as a bathroom bill. What they were saying is that men would dress up as women and go commit nefarious or criminal acts in restrooms. The assumption that as a father, when you send your daughter into a public restroom with the expectation that will she will not encounter men while she is at her most vulnerable state would be gone. Parents have a duty to raise their children and to protect their children. There are opponents to this bill who have attempted to stoke unreasonable fears about the implications of this bill. The bill was in the mud and it was moving very slowly. And what I decided to do was figure out how much of this um, would fall by the wayside if the bathroom uh, component wasn't uh, a part of it, the accom public accommodations portion. Chairman O'Flaherty worked really diligently to come up with a bill that he felt could pass the House. I respectfully suggest that this issue in front of you will bring Massachusetts into the 21st century in terms of our anti-discrimination statutes. And the more you focus on the core intent of this bill, I think individuals of all beliefs will agree that these protections are important. A roll call is ordered forthwith and will be open for three minutes. All those in favor say aye, opposed no. Time for voting has expired. The clerk will display the tally. 95 votes in the affirmative, 58 in the negative. The message is passed to be adopted. The way that I heard about the passage of the transgender bill was that our state representative, he sent me a text, he said, a victory for Chelsea and for you. Transgender bill passed. Empezamos a llorar, a gritar, a sonreír. Oh my God, por fin, vamos a hacer justicia. It doesn't happen every time you pass a bill where the public spectators will erupt and clap and cheer. There was a ceremonial signing that happened in January. It was historic. The Senate reading room filled to capacity with uh, transgender people and their families, with legislators and elected officials. I was very proud of being a Massachusetts resident. I was heading to Boston for a meeting, and I took a detour, went to the cemetery to celebrate with my brother. I think Chelsea's example for many other communities that think that there's no hope. Me gustaría que todo eso reflejara en todos los Estados Unidos, que tomaran en cuenta, que tomaran como un ejemplo Massachusetts que aquí nosotros pues por lo menos estamos abriendo puertas aunque no está totalmente la victoria queremos más queremos más más tolerancia queremos que los toleren que nos que nos respeten más que todo